Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I am Stefano, as you can see down in the bottom of the screen right here. Maybe some of you already know me or maybe remember me from our previous webinar in case you, yeah, you participated in one of the previous webinar I, I hosted. Um, today we're going to be talking about the newest entry in the website X5 family, which is website X5 2022.2. I'm just going to be waiting a few seconds to see if you can just hear and see me. All right, you should see the chat box on the right side of your screen. If you can just post a quick feedback to let me know uh, that you can just hear me, that you can hear me just fine, just let me know. Let's see. You should be able to chat on the right side of your screen if you're on YouTube. Okay, I can see Patrick. Hi, Stefano from UK. Hi, Patrick from Italy, of course. Okay, everything is fine, everything fine. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Just gonna wait a few more seconds, see that everyone can get in just fine. Hello from Holland. Okay. Loud and clear. Okay, well, then I guess we can get started. So, as I said before, today we're going to be talking about the newest entry, of course, version 2022.2. Uh, in this newest version of the software, and here I'm talking about both the Evo and Pro Edition, um, we've worked specifically on rebuilding uh, one of the most basic concepts of the software, which is file selection. Um, we worked on on the fundamental um, system which, which the software is based on that allows you to select videos, to select images, to select files from your computer or from the web and place it inside your project. Um, if you remember before, once you click the, on the specific icons that let you select files, you will be brought directly to the Windows browsing screen that allows you to select images, to select videos from the computer. Then you had in a separate area, the Pixabay and Deposit Photo uh, area uh, that allowed you to download pictures from these services I just mentioned. Uh, in the newest version, now this is going to change. We've reduced the number of buttons to a single one. And from this one button, you will access our newest file selection screen, which allows you to select files from both your computer or the web. I'm going to be showing this to you uh, in a second, just after my quick presentation. Um, so let's say this is the main thing that has changed in the newest version, which of course, together with this also brings up a very new and exciting feature, which is the library and the optimization of the project, which just wasn't there before. So talking about the library, what I mean is uh, previously, if you wanted to select a file, if you wanted to select an image, a video, and you wanted to place it inside your project, you had to browse your computer, find the image, select it then the image would be placed on the page of your choosing. But in, let's say you wanted to use the same image on a different page, you would have to go to the other page, then select the same image again from the computer, and creating all this bloat in your project, making like growing size with multiple image of the same kind, um, which of course, if you've been working on a project for a long time, could mean that the project would just grow in size, maybe a little bit too much. This is not going to be the case anymore with the library, and I will explain why uh, later. Together with this, the, this new um, file selection system allowed us to introduce a new optimization system, which essentially aims to solve the issue uh, I just mentioned. So if you were working on your project for a long time, you probably noticed that it grew in size. And often, this, of course, this could be because you've added more pages, more content to it. But this could also happen because of file duplication. Maybe you inserted the same image twice. Maybe there's old images which you used in a previous version of the project, but it's not in use anymore. And it still remains linked inside the project. This could cause the project to grow up in size. And there was no real way before uh, to remove all of this content uh, that was simply not used anymore. In the newest version, you're going to be able to do this. Mm, and I guess we can just move on to the software. I'm going to be streaming my screen now. Uh, so I will show you where to find these functionalities, how to use them, how to make the best of them. So if you notice I'm looking up, it's just because my screen is way up. I'm not, I'm not looking at the sky or anything. So uh, let's see. 
Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so this project is one of our base template that I just opened up. I just downloaded and imported it inside the software. So it's like a brand new uh, template straight from us. Uh, you can see here that I have like some image object. I have text objects uh, um, for this webinar specifically. I'm going to be showing you uh, the image object, but just keep in mind that everywhere you can pick an image to put inside your project that you're going to be able to use uh, this new file selection screen. So let's open up this image object right here. You see that I currently have uh, an image configured already. And you used to have two icons right here, one for local files and one for online files. Now you just have the one icon. So I'm going to be clicking on this one. And you can see that this new window opens. This new window is entirely new, entirely dedicated to the new version. You can see that you have multiple tabs on the top, which allows you to select files from your local computer. Then you have premium images, then you have free images, file from URL, and then the library, which is the newest thing I'm going to be talking about later. Um, so what you're getting here is more or less the same as the classic window file selection. Uh, you can see right here that I have my folders. I just pre-click this folder now to show you. I have multiple images in here. I can select one, I can select two. I can actually select two right now because the image object only allows for one image at a time. But anyway, if I just click on one object, on one, I'm sorry, on one image and I select OK, uh, you can see that the image gets configured here. And if I click on preview, uh, I'm going to show you right here. There. You can see that the image appears right here. So we've effectively changed the image to the new one. Uh, okay, so this is what happens when you select the file locally. So th there's not really much, mm, there's not really anything new going on here because you could do this um, just as well before, just in a different way. Uh, what's really special about this is whether I pick an image from the local uh, files, from the computer, from the free images on Pixabay, from the premium images on deposit photos or via URL, I'm going to be finding all of the images that were used inside my project in this new uh, library section. You can see that it's right here. Uh, so essentially this library section allows you to keep track of all of the um, files, all of the images, all of the videos you previously used inside your project. You can see that there's some images here already because they come with the template. There's the image I added. So let's, let's assume I want to change the image now. I can just click on whatever and then OK. And you can see that the image changes right here too. And the same goes for the preview, uh, just like I did before. You can see the image is changed here. I want to move back to the previous image. I can just go back to the library and select the image again. OK, compared to before, I would just go to local file and would select the image again. And the image would then get re-imported again into the project, potentially making it grow in size. This is no longer going to be the case. This will allow you to keep the project more organized you also have a way to always keep under track what content, what resources you used inside the project, which is not something that was possible before. And then again, of course, you can select an image you previously used uh, to make sure that the project remains light and fast. Um, again, you can use the free images as well. You can use the, premius ima the premium images. You can see if I click on this right here and I go OK, the image gets downloaded and then I can find it in the preview as well. Just keep in mind that if you are going to be using a file from URL image, this image will not be um, downloaded onto your computer so you won't find it into the library because the file from URL is entirely um, meant to uh, not create uh, new content inside your project. Uh, the image will remain stored online. So this is just a reference to the online to the online resource. It will not go into your project. Your project will not increase in size. But also, should you decide to export your project elsewhere, and then you would expect to find the image together with the project, that won't be the case. The image will still be uh, online. You get, of course, your search functionality. You get the chance of selecting list grid. You can increase the size of the images. You can order by type, by size, by name, by date, 
most of what you would normally expect to find in such a system. Okay, so I'm just going to select an image again. There we go. Uh, yeah, just as I mentioned before, I've just shown you the image object, but if I were to insert a gallery inside this page, as you can see right here, I can just click on add again and I get the same kind of interface right here. I can select more than one image this time. So it works just like that. And then click on preview and I get the gallery right here. You can see. Okay, so that's, that's about it for the file selection window. Um, basically, it's not... Um, the main difference here is not that this is going to change the way you work with images, but the real advantage is going to be in size of the project and performance, because you will still be able to select your images from the computer. You will still be able to select your images online, but the real difference will come after you've been working on the project for a little bit of time. You will notice that the project is faster. You will notice that the project is lighter. And of course, this will apply also to older projects which you might be importing from a previous version of the software. So this is not something that you will only find if you start a new project inside the newest version, but this will be available, of course, for any project you decide to import into the latest version. Um, okay, so this is the library. This is the file selection window. I'm going to be showing you uh, in step five this new option right here called optimize the project which is actually a little different from optimize the website, which is something you had access to um, before as well, because optimize the website is actually used to find any possible uh, SEO issue uh, inside your project, or maybe some configuration error that you might have committed while building um, the website. Well, the optimize the project option works in an entirely different way. So let's start by analyzing the screen. First of all, you get the export the project resources right here. You can see that it says all library resources, only the ones linked to the project, only the ones that aren't linked to the project, and then you get a destination folder. So what this does essentially is this. Let's assume you've built your project, you've placed images, you've placed videos, you've placed files inside of it, and then you just want to back all of that up in a separate folder. So what I'm saying is you're not going to be making a full backup of your project. You're just going to be uh, to be making a, a backup of all the files you used inside the project. Let's assume you want to use the same exact images on a different project. You can just use this functionality. You will be getting a folder with all of the images you used inside. You can just take this folder. You can do whatever you want with it. You can just keep the images saved on your computer. You can use them for another project. This is what it does essentially. So it saves all of the resources of the project into a separate folder, which again is different from backupping the project. Let's make that very, very, very clear. Mm, the second thing you're going to be finding is delete the resources that are linked to the project, which essentially means what I was mentioning before. So let's assume you've used images, you've used videos previously in your project, which are no longer needed you can use this option to clear all of those files out from your project and make the project lighter. In order for you to understand exactly what I mean by resources that aren't linked, we're going to be looking at the left side of the screen. So you can see right here that it says project size, which of course is the size of your project. You get the size of the linked resources, which is um, like the total space, all of the files you used inside the software take up uh, in the project. So this does not mm, take under consideration texts, um, yeah, the structure of the website, the pages, all of that stuff, just the images, videos, and files. Then you get this option right here, which says resources linked to the backups and not linked resources. So uh, of course, by not linked resources, I mean just what I meant before. So I've used an image, then I delete the image object which contained the image. Then the image will be mentioned under not linked resources because I used to use the image in the project. Now I no longer do. So this image is kind of lingering inside the project with no real use. With this option, you're going to be able to remove that kind of files. Uh, resources linked to the backups is a little different. 
Let's say you are importing a new project from an older version. You decide to delete all of the resources that are linked to the project, which is very simple, by the way. You just click here and then click on the start. And the files would be deleted automatically. You can see that it now says 100% and the number disappear right here. Uh, there might be times when you believe some images you've used should not be in the library before you've attempted to delete the resources that are linked to the projects, but you can still find that image. In most cases, that might come from two different types of situation. The first situation is that the image is actually in use somewhere in the project, and you might be have might be um, I'm sorry, you might be having trouble finding it. Or eventually, maybe the image was used in a previous version of the website. Then the website got backups inside of it where the image is still in use. So unless you remove those backups from your project, the images will not be unlinked because the software knows that a backup still has that image in use and it won't be able to remove it. If you want to remove that kind of data as well, uh, this is not something you can do directly from here. You need to either export your project without backups or you need to remove the backups from your project. If you do that, of course, even if images were used in a previous version of the, of the project, uh, no backup is using those any longer. So they will be mentioned under not linked resources instead. Then you can use this functionality to remove those images as well. In this case, it should work. So if you believe an image should not be there, but it still is, and you see that no number is appearing here, um, just remember that those images might still be in use in a backup. So it might be worth remembering that you can try and remove the backups to see if the issue gets solved that way. Of course, also keep in mind that removing your backups will, of course, um, potentially generate issues if you ever need to restore a backup from your project because you might not have backups anymore. So in some cases, it is better to just take the backup folder and backup, you, you, sorry for the pun, you're going to be backupping uh, the backup folder for your project somewhere else. So if you ever need to restore it, you can just get that backup folder and place it back inside of your project. While in the meantime, also um, making sure that your project remains as light as possible with no uh, unlinked resources still lingering inside it. Uh, so yeah, I believe this is about it. Again, of course, I've shown you the image and the gallery in step four, but keep in mind that you can do the same, for example, in the template content section. So if I were to add an image here, uh, if I were to add an image in the template structure section, I can add images everywhere. You, everywhere you can place an image, you can use that functionality I've just shown you. So I believe that should be all. Let's see. So this is about all I uh, had to explain. If you have any specific question about anything I've just shown, if you have any doubts, uh, if maybe anything I shown was unclear to you, please feel free to let me know in, in the chat right now so I can check your questions and see if I can maybe uh, clarify a little bit uh, whatever your doubts may be. So let's see. Of course, don't be shy. Feel free to post any question to the chat. Just going to wait a bit and see if any question pop ups. Of course, if no question pops up, I'm just going to assume that I was perfectly clear and you have no, no questions at all whatsoever. Of course, that would make me very happy, of course, but I'm sure that maybe some question or some doubt might still be there somewhere. Let's see. I'm getting a thumbs up, so I assume I was perfectly clear for you, Anthony. That's very good to hear. Thank you. Okay. Perfectly clear. Okay. Okay. That's very good to hear. Perfectly clear. From Dimitri, from David as well. Okay, okay. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Easy to understand as well. Well, I'm, I'm glad it was helpful to you. Of course, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, I hope what made it easy to understand was my explanation as well. Uh, so yeah, I believe that is all. 
I've got for you for today. Um, before closing this this webinar, I'm just going to remind you that due to the fact that the software, that the new version of the software just launched, uh, we're having a very strong discount available for you. Um, this is a 40% discount on both the Evo and the Pro Edition. So if you are interested in this, you can just visit our official website at websitex5.com or even at www.incomedia.eu under the software section. You can find the discount for the for whatever edition of the software, both, both on our official website or Incomedia website whatever you prefer. If you have any further question, if maybe something, uh, I don't know, maybe you have some doubts still lingering and it, it comes out later when the webinar already finished, uh, just keep in mind that you can contact me or you can contact my colleague on our official help center. You can contact us via email. You can just give us a call. Uh, whatever you need, we're going to be able um, to offer the, the proper level of assistance to you. I'm pretty sure of that. So I guess that would be all. I would thank you again for joining me today. Again, I hope everything was clear. I hope the webinar was helpful to you. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you and have a good day.